Thank you for tuning in to Matters of the Heart Radio Live with your host, Biblical Counselor and Author, Ms. Wendy. You can chat with us by clicking on the chat icon in your player to send us a message. Now, here's your host, Ms. Wendy. Hello and welcome to Matters of the Heart Radio Show with me, your host, Wendy Torres. It's such a joy to spend some time with you. Wherever you are, I love hearing from you, and I thank you for supporting me here on Matters of the Heart Radio Show. Well, today we're talking about those who are journeying through life as a single parent. Maybe that's you. Maybe you are raising a child or some children alone, and you are wondering, is this ever going to end? Are the hard times going to end, or how can I do this better? Maybe you feel alone and you're beginning to become discouraged through the work that it takes to raise your children. Well, that's what we're talking about on the show today. There is such a special grace on our lives as single parents. I too am a single mom. I'm a single mom of four and I've been through many ups and downs, mountains and valleys with the children. And I have such a heart for encouraging the the hearts of those that are either male or female, whether you're mom or dad, maybe grandma or grandpa, maybe you're an aunt or an uncle, a cousin, someone significant in a child's life. And you're raising them and it is tough. There is no doubt about it. It is tough trying to get all of the bills paid, keep the house clean, keep them involved, keep a good relationship with them where, you, where you're feeling connected, disciplining them, discipling them. There's so much to raising children. And what do we have that is more precious to us than our children? Actually, nothing. I don't know anyone who's a parent who does not absolutely love their children. They may not be doing the best they think, but maybe it's really the best that they can do, or maybe there are ways that they can do better. I'm a really big proponent of learning, learning how to whatever, (laughs) whatever it is. If we can learn how to do it better, then let's make ourselves um, good stewards of the abilities and the time that we have and sit down behind a book, take a class, get behind a computer. Google is great at helping us look things up. And let's begin to do some things that will help us be more effective in parenting children on our own and in staying encouraged in doing so. So if you know a single mom and dad or a single mom or dad, maybe you're not, but the chances are that you know someone who is because the divorce rate within our country is very high. Coming close to 50%, we have so many children being raised in single parent homes or blended families. Blended families is a topic I'll be doing again soon. And it's imperative that as a Christian society, we are well able to encourage and help those that are traveling through this in life. Now, not everyone is a single parent because of divorce. Um, There are many widows and widowers who find themselves raising children alone, and they too are a single parent. There are some that are raising their children's children. Maybe they have someone, um, one of their children is incarcerated or is ill, and they're needing to raise grandchildren, and they find themselves alone. Whatever the case is, today we are going to talk about the grace that God has for us in raising children and how we can be the most effective through this season. We don't want to quit. We don't want to give up. We do not want to become discouraged and allow others to take our rightful place in influencing and raising our children. So today is uh, let's go. Let's get it going. Get up. We can do this. I'm in your corner kind of day. And here with me today is Christine, who's helping to run the technical side of things. And it's been kind of challenging this morning so far. So I am so glad that she's here to make sure that y'all can hear me on the other end of this microphone today and her as well because she chimes in from time to time if you're just listening to matters of the heart radio show you may hear her voice from time to time as she kind of balances other thoughts and ideas and contributes as well so christine we're talking about single parents and you and i have been friends for a long time and you've kind of watched me on this journey and you've been one of my cheerleaders for the past eight or so years and you've kind of seen it from the outside you know it takes so much to raise children 
it has financially, emotionally, spiritually, it takes so much energy. And there are so many people out there doing this. And I know that they need to be encouraged as they journey through this. Um, I'm glad that you're here with me to help share in, in some of that and bounce your ideas as well. Are we sounding good over there now? Is everything like ready? <laughs> That is what I'm here for to make you sound pretty. That's right. So, Christine, so many times it's easy to get discouraged or to feel like you're encouraged one minute and discouraged another as a single parent. And it can be so hard. The the tasks, the list on my to-do list can be so long sometimes that I know realistically there's no way I'm going to get everything done on my list that day. And I know there are other people on here listening. So today, let's encourage them and just kind of um, spur them on to greatness as they are raising children on their own. You know, I want you to know that you're not the only single parent in the world, though you may feel like you are the only one and no one understands. There is a unique bond among single parents, which is something that I've learned over time, which is amazing and how well we can rally together and encourage each other or brainstorm together in solving problems. A single parent has a way to solve problems that no one else sometimes thinks of because they're used to having to depend upon themselves or, like I said earlier, um, things such as the internet or books to find the resources that they need to get tasks accomplished, whether it's fixing a leaky sink or um, coming up with clever ideas on how to take a vacation without spending a lot of money or on a small budget. I want you to know that not only is it something that we face now, but it's something that we can read about in the Bible as well. And I don't want us to become like the lady, the widow who was discouraged with her son thinking she was preparing their last meal and then they were going to die. I want us to be encouraged and, and know that we know that we know that God is for us, he is not against us, and that he has a special grace that's dispensed to us according to our need and according to the needs of our children. You know, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a single parent. That's what Bible scholars say. They say that um, after the age of 12, there is no record of Joseph being in Jesus's life. But how many of us have contemplated that she was a single mother and had multiple children? That's what I believe, that she had multiple children. Jesus was not her only child. And look at how they turned out. I look at Jesus. You know, she ushered in his first miracle at the wedding of Cana. He was with his mom. They were celebrating there together. When she saw a problem, she knew her son could handle it. Is that because he was a stranger and he left home and and they didn't have a relationship? No, it's because they had continued to travel and journey together through life. They were still connected. And she helped to recognize and could recognize when it really was his time. People, I just had a... um, uh, Christine, what do you call it? A, a Facebook what? Troll? <laughs> yeah, so some social media troll. A social media troll. Come on one of my one of uh, one of my pages and and was commenting when Father's Day came around and and I was recognizing single moms who are doing the job of both mother and father. Now, I am not saying that a woman can be a man by any stretch of the imagination. By saying you know, yes, you're doing a good job. What I am saying, though, is that there are single moms out there who are stepping up to the plate, who are doing what it takes to really try to help their children live a balanced, good, happy life. And it's all on them for whatever reason. Sometimes the father may be involved in the children's life. And honestly, sometimes they're not. I've had it both ways. I've experienced both things where the state comes in and says, the other father cannot have access to the children and then when he does and so I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that a woman is a man and can offer everything a man can but what I am saying is that she most of the time 
She does her very best and it's worthy of honor. Likewise, there are some single fathers out there that I know are learning how to braid hair, playing with Barbie dolls, going to PTA meetings, going to ballet class. What do they, they don't know how to be a ballerina, but by all means, they put their whole heart into raising their daughter or daughters to the very best of their ability. And they're doing those things that probably a mother would typically do. So let's jump into some practical things about being a single parent. You know, I I think that it's important that we look at practical help and practical tools, practical ideas um, as to how we can do this well. And if you're not a single parent, maybe you know someone who is. And by listening to the show, you can offer them some valuable suggestions as well. The first thing I want to talk about is having our priorities straight. So many times people say that they know that what their priorities are and and their priorities, what they say by, by mouth is one thing, but how they live is a completely different one. We can't really go by what someone says if they say that their priority is their children, if really the, their priority is the television. If you're spending more time with the television watching shows on TV than you are your children, the reality is, is your children are not really your priority. And that can be a really hard pill to swallow, but it is the truth. And it's important that we reevaluate and evaluate just where we spend our time because where we spend our time and where we spend our money really tells us what our priorities are. There are so many things available and ready to snatch our time, whether it be five minutes at a time, 10, 20, 30, an hour, that before we know it, days are gone. And if we have not learned to seize the day and really live intentionally, then it's going to slip right through our fingers and we will look back wondering what happened to the day? Where did the time go? And so I think that it's important um, for us to help ourselves out as single parents and really evaluate how we're spending our time and who or what is getting the majority of our time. Now, I know that we all have a career, we have to make a living, and we're going to be there so many hours a day. Um, Outside of that, though, where is your time going? You see, all things are possible, but not all things are profitable. That's what the Word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. All things are possible. It is possible to watch TV. It is possible to go into debt and you run up those credit cards. It is possible to watch the late night shows, but you're really tired in the morning. It is possible to sign your children up for a multitude of activities, but never really have a good connection with them. Just because it's possible, it does not necessarily mean that it's profitable. We want to look at what is profitable. Where are we going? Have you even considered what you really want to accomplish in your parenting? I know one of the things that I want to accomplish is I want to bring people into the world that are disciples of Christ, who are firmly planted in the word of God, who are relationally healthy, they are responsible, that they are well-educated. What about you? I think in theory we can say, oh, I want my kids to be happy and good, but what are we doing to help them become those people? As we're trying to live a balanced life, which is really key, as we're trying to live a balanced life, it's really important that we try to manage well our time. And it's not all about fun and signing them up for a multitude of extracurricular activities so that they're so busy there and so tired that a they don't have enough energy to do their studies well or b we ourselves are exhausted from running them around everywhere that we're not any good for them we're too tired to connect with them or c we're so involved in activities that we really don't spend any time reading god's word together or playing together ourselves, having a good time, whatever that may be, whatever that may look like age appropriately, and really getting to connect, to share life, to have meals together, and to do that sort of thing. So time management is key. It's really important that we really evaluate where we are spending our time. Okay, Christine, any thoughts on that? The first thing that jumps into my mind is when you speak about the role that a single parent has to play in being in their kids' life and parenting their lives and really learning a new 
I wouldn't say a new skill set, but your scope of the problems that you handle being so much more diverse now. And um, not that you would, um, you know, it's not always about the masculine or the feminine things in their life, but they're going to come to you for everything. Everything. And it's not, well, I know I can talk to dad about this Mm -hmm. and I know I can talk to mom about that. It's, I have no choice. Mm -hmm. I have to, there's mom and, you know, things that might be more sensitive to her ears that could easily be talked about. I think especially when you're talking a across the genders Mm -hmm. you know now you've got to bring in that skill set of uh, being there for all the topics your kids Mm -hmm. have to bring up because you're the only one Mm -hmm. available most times Mm -hmm. um I think just the mental the the thing that strikes me is the mental draw that it has on a parent Mm -hmm. because you don't have another person another Mm -hmm. adult constantly in your life that that garners your children's attention you don't have the opportunity per se to to have that quote-unquote break from your kids which everybody needs from time to time I think and it sounds to me like being a single parent becomes another full-time job Mm -hmm. especially when they're younger because you are devoting all of your time and all of your energy to them every activity they're involved in requires you to be the transportation Mm -hmm. every problem or issue they have it requires your time and energy and i it sounds to me like there's twice as much as in, in, involved and you have to as a single parent uh, develop a whole new skill set of dealing with that and find somehow find energy mm-hmm. um and all of that to uh, you know help give your children i think uh, the you know a, a return to balance after you know Uh, uh, an event that would upset the two-parent household. Sure. And so as I was talking about time management and uh, and the importance of managing your time well, I think the next place to visit... Um in the conversation here kind of is to your point it's really about perspective so because you are required to be the transporter you you're going to take them back and forth to practice maybe whatever they're involved in you're going to which you can learn to carpool and coordinate with other parents sometimes and make sure that you utilize that if you can and you feel comfortable with it the other is you know whatever injuries they sustain you're going to be the one to clean it up you're going to make sure they get cleaned up before they go to bed they get their homework done that their folders are signed if they're in elementary school if they're in high school that they are doing what they need to do to to stay on top of their classes and so forth in the midst of everything that you have to do though you can become discouraged overwhelmed feeling like this is too much it's all on me and I want to challenge that way of thinking because our perspective is everything you know I sometimes when I would get discouraged and I would feel down I would begin to have some of that element of that element of that bit of self-pity come in as well and self-pity is awful it is dangerous and it is imperative that we do not let ourselves fall into the pit of self-pity of poor me I have to do all of this alone poor me the quicker we eradicate the self-pity the quicker we can get on to enjoying a good happy life the reality is is that anything that you are going through right now has not taken God by surprise one time when my oldest son was going through a rebellious stage he I was crying and I was um, crying out to God and I had my Bible I didn't know what to do I didn't know how else to discipline him or to really reach his heart I felt like I was at my wits end and I was just crying 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 praying and I heard the Lord so gently say to me quit saying that you can't quit saying that you can't because I kept saying God I can't do this I can't do this and he said you can do all things Wendy all things everything that he called me to including being a single mom through him through Christ who gives me strength we're familiar with the verse in Philippians But are we living it out? When we begin to change that mindset of I can't to I can, we begin to change our life. Because the truth is, is we can do all things through Christ. We can do. He will show us. He will guide us. He will partner with us in what we have to do. So let's take a quick break. We're going to come back talking about 
eliminating self-pity the and the pit that that is in our lives as single parents and embracing the perspective that we are blessed, we are fortunate even to be envied as we have the privilege of shaping the minds, the country, the world that we live in. Are you suffering from a past hurt? Lingering pains can inhibit your potential to be all that God has in store for you in your life. As a biblical counselor, Miss Wendy has written Healing Waters, a 21-day workbook which offers well-thought-out steps to emotional recovery. Making use of hands-on activities, prayers, and meditation on Scripture, Miss Wendy helps build faith and develop patterns that establish lifelong vitality. Why not take that step to the healthy, whole, God-filled individual you're meant to be? Go to mattersoftheheartradio.org to order your copy today. That's mattersoftheheartradio.org. You're listening to Matters of the Heart Radio with your host, Miss Wendy. We'd love to hear from you today. You can chat with us by clicking on the chat icon in the player located on mattersoftheheartradio.org. Or you can also reach out to us on our Facebook page at Matters of the Heart Radio. Now, here's your host, Miss Wendy. Okay, if you're just tuning in, you are listening to Matters of the Heart Radio Show with me, your host, Wendy Torres. And it's a joy to be encouraging your heart as we talk about and encourage single parents today. I've been a single parent now for quite some time, and I can understand firsthand the challenges that single parents go through. And so today I want to spur you on. I want to tell you, come on, keep going. You're, you are doing great. You're giving it your best. Let's see if any of the things I've done and things I've seen others do can help fine tune that schedule that you're living and help make things easier for you in life. We're talking about not having self-pity, not um, pitying ourselves and feeling like we have the short end of the stick. Yes, the work can be daunting, but I want you to know that equally you will find that the reward will be just as rewarding. If you have little tiny ones and they're in elementary school and you are just running about and it requires a lot, I want you to know it will not always be that way. They are going to get older. They will get to where they can wash their own clothes, help you do more things around the house, and it will not always be this hard. If you have those that are in high school and you're thinking, my gosh, now it's hard, but it's hard in a different way um, because they are so busy and they're connected with their friends and I miss them. I want you to know that things are still good and keeping that connection is still um, an option. It is still out there. Staying connected is very real. And if they're in college, I want you to know that this can begin such a special time of friendship between you and them. So regardless of where you're at, I want you to know we must keep going. And I want to encourage you to change your perspective from poor me or this is so hard to I am so blessed. I am so fortunate. I I have this child's love. Whatever your child is, mine would be Stephen. I have Stephen's love. I have this relationship with him that is precious. He's mine. I brought him into this world and it's and he is mine to nurture, to cherish, to admonish, to discipline, to disciple. And as he, um, well, I'll just talk about Stephen for a little bit. Stephen's 21 now. As he's continued to get older, it has been such a joy. Although once upon a time, he had me crying, thinking I could not do it. Right, Christine, because you were there with me. You know, you saw those things. To now, we, we go. We just had a date last night. I take my kids on dates. And I we went out on a date last night and had pizza at a pizza place that he loves. And just sat and talked and had such a wonderful time. I think he is absolutely hilarious. He makes me laugh. I get his humor. I'm watching him manage a restaurant, make his way through college. He's still living at home. He helps. I'm just so proud of him and and the things that he's doing with life. Yet I can look at times when it wasn't quite so easy. So I want to encourage you, if you are going through those hard times, do not give up. Don't give up. That's that's a motto in my life, too. I have very similar... um, 
a very similar background in that regard and really, really did a rebellious number with my parents. And uh, fortunately, um, my mom and my dad were just, I mean, good grief. My mom says, I earned my way to heaven because of you. (laughs) I'm kind of really agreeing with her because I know your stories and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Yeah. How many times times you plunked a phone down in front of me and just said, you call her right now and apologize to her and tell her I love you for for all she did. Yes. Call her. Tell her that you love her right now. It's, It's very true. I think the, you know, I think that godly that godly parent that is just so so perseveres after their child mm-hmm. because they can see and know where their child is is and that it's not a good place and that that parent's heart that mother's heart that just aches for that child to be the godly individual you know they're supposed to be and and that perseverance especially when you put it sounds cheesy I guess but especially when you put God behind that motivation it's not just me wanting you to be good or me wanting you to succeed it's just the power of of faith behind everything that you do and that deep deep love of 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 wanting you to be close to God and I think just seeing that in your life as well just that your children will always come back to that Mm -hmm. because that touchstone of God and Mm -hmm. faith is it resonates throughout their life and there's no matter how far away they go from it and how much they try to shut the door on it it is always there knocking it's Jesus always there knocking at the door of your heart because why your mother you know my mother put that in me hardcore wired in me and Mm -hmm. and when they do come back around like you're talking Mm -hmm. about with Steven it's it's beautiful Mm -hmm. to see them start cultivating Mm -hmm. that relationship as well because it makes your relationships easier sure And I think as parents, whether you're a mother or a father, you have a God-given ability to see the greatness that lies within your child. And I think that it is it is a tremendous blessing and a responsibility that God gives us as he allows us to see that greatness, the potential that lies within. I think he allows us to see it so we will draw that potential out. We will cult- help them to cultivate those gifts in, the, in their life that God has given them. If you're not doing it and if you give up on your child, who do they have? Honestly, who do they have? If you as a single parent quit, if you give up, what will become of your child or your children who you brought into this world? I really want to encourage you today. Don't give up. Don't quit. Let's keep going. Let's keep looking at other options and ways that we can do this and make it as easy for ourselves as possible. Let's look at time as we're talking again um, about time today and time management perspective. Let's look at some of you have children who you only have um, sometimes. Maybe you have a a weekend visitation schedule or you have 50-50 custody, a joint custody situation, and you're thinking, well, I don't have all the time in the world to raise them. I only have a limited amount of time. I'm going to say let's focus on quality rather than quantity. Make sure when you have your children that you are making rich deposits in their lives. Make sure that you are doing things intentionally. When you do not have them, plan. Don't wait until the last second and just kind of hope that everything comes together. Hope that you have meaningful conversation. Hope that you can find something fun to do. No, be very proactive. Take charge of your life. Take charge of that time. What skill set do you see in them that you can help fortify? What activities could you plan around that? Um, What meaningful relationships could you help cultivate in their life that would make them a richer person. If it's really a borrowed time type situation, look at quality rather than quantity. And by all means, let us not be Disneyland parents to where when they come with us, it's all about fun. It's not about discipleship. It's not about discipline. It's not about training because then we do not set our children up for success and what it takes to make it in life because life is not always going to be a vacation. It's not always going to be fun. It is about mowing the lawn. It is about washing the 
clothes. It is about um, getting homework done and doing projects. Look to see how you can aid them in becoming more responsible. And don't be afraid to delegate some of the housework with them. If you're a single parent, there is no way you can possibly get it all done. And I don't even have to say that twice. You already know it. I want you to know that it's important and it is good for children to have chores. It is good for them to have an element of responsibility and to contribute to the upkeep of their home. We don't want them to um, to be weakened or kind of handicapped by enabling them to just sit and watch TV and play video games while we are doing all of the work as as their parents. No, not at all. And there's nothing to feel guilty over in giving them responsibility, which is age appropriate. You know, if they're younger, maybe cleaning the table and, and chairs. When I can think of when my children were small, um, they all had different chores. But Lydia, I can remember when she was four years old she was just a tiny thing she's still tiny now she's all four foot nine (laughs) fixing to be 18 and but she was even smaller then and she wanted to do something so bad because she saw her older brother and sister doing their chores and I just gave her a little spray bottle that had water in it in a rag and I would have her clean the table and chairs and she was so happy and felt like she was part of the team but when we all pitch in and we all roll up our sleeves to get things done they are accomplished without it being overtaxing on just mom or dad so don't be afraid to to split up chores um, and have them help you we want them to be successful on their own and we want them to know what it's like to contribute to a family we don't want them looking to their spouse alone to take care of all the responsibilities at home we want them to be a contributor and a good partner for the person that they are with Also, let's look at um, disciplining them. It's important that we remain consistent in disciplining the children. It's not going to help them if they have everything their way. If they get to call all the shots and they never get in trouble or there is no consequence for poor decisions, it really sets them up for failure because we know as adults that the world does not operate that way. There are consequences for not following rules. For example, should we choose to run a red light and not heed the rules or the law of stopping at a red light? We're probably going to have a consequence if it's not an accident. It's likely going to come on a piece of paper called a ticket where we are expected to pay money. Why? Because we are expected to follow the rules without someone there constantly monitoring what we're doing. Let's look at an electric company. You know, if we choose not to pay the bill and to go out to eat instead, we're going to find ourselves without power at home. There are just consequences for being irresponsible or not following rules. And that is the life that our children are headed for. They are headed for a life where they must be responsible. So it's imperative that we teach them responsibility. When they get jobs, it is imperative that we teach them how to budget their money, how to save, how to um, tithe their money. I'm going to get to tithing in a little bit. But teaching them how to be good manager of, managers of their money is essential. It's a blessing, too, when you come into the adult world to have that sort of responsibility or that sort of um, structure set up in your life because you really do take not only in the things that you're responsible for but in the way that you interact with others and the way that it's it's a it's a wonderful compass to have because as soon as you get out into the real world it's very it can be very disorienting and uh, it's much better to go to class with at least some I clean clothes and knowing how to make more than ramen noodles and having some sense of money management Mm -hmm. and not just that but how you treat other individuals Mm -hmm. what you tolerate and what you don't and what you allow from others and what you don't it all came from you know your parent Mm -hmm. and 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 what they structured you to do and Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a I'm not a parent, but it seems very beneficial, much more beneficial to me if they set down the phone or the tablet every once in a while and interact in Absolutely. a way that because you're never isolated, you're never by yourself, mm-hmm. and you're going to have 
repercussion, repercussions and consequences to everything you do, both good and bad. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, I don't think that we have to fall into the stigma of um, what what some perceive children to be like who come from single parent homes, which would be undisciplined, immature, um, out of control, uneducated. That That's not necessary. It is absolutely not necessary. And I want to encourage you to defy the odds, to take upon yourself the truth of scripture, especially if you're a woman, um, where it says that the Lord, your God, your maker is your husband. You're not really single. And as you begin to lean upon him, and if you're a single dad, knowing that you yourself are a bridegroom, the word of God teaches us this, that you have within the Lord and the Holy Spirit being present with us at all times, the help that you need, the partner that you need all of the time. Yes, we want someone physically there, and it does help to have someone physically there. But sometimes there are those seasons when no one is really there. But regardless of whether a physical person is there or not, you have the Lord on your side. And if you will incline your ear to his wisdom, if you will incline your ear to his word, if you will discipline yourself to continue to learn what his voice sounds like, practicing the presence of God, you're going to find that there's more grace there. If you're trying to get up and start every day without first spending time with the Lord, without dedicating your day into his hands, without praying for your children, you're going to find that your days are a whole lot harder and it's really unnecessary. He goes back to what I was saying before about priorities. We want to give God our the first and the best part of our day. Now, for me, it comes about 30 minutes after I've been awake because that would be the best part. First is not, uh, first in my world is not wide awake as soon as I open my eyes. The point being that we're not alone. But if we are not regularly visiting with the Lord and communing with him all day long, we really will feel more alone than what we really are. And we can completely convince ourselves of something that's not true, such as we can't do it or that we, um, our children are not going to make it, that we can fall into a trap of self-pity. So let's make sure we're not doing that, okay? Okay. Disciplining your children according to what is appropriate for them is wise. And do it, the earlier you do it, the better. Because your children will get to an age, they will get to a point in time when a spanking no longer works or a time out will not work. Not a time out where they can just sit in a chair for five minutes. Oh no. Times will come when they have a greater sense of independence. They have a mind. They have a a steady influence of other children in in their lives. And they will begin to use these things called words and sarcastic words at times. And if you do not already have that relationship where they have an honor for you and a fear, not, not a fear because you're abusive, but a godly fear, that you're the one in authority and there is an expectation from them. If you do not start that early in life, you're going to have a lot of trouble the older they get. As it is, teenage adolescent years can be challenging because they have their hormones going crazy and they're trying to establish their own sense of identity apart from you, which is normal, which is natural. So you want to make sure that you are consistently disciplining them according to what they need. So when they're children, it may be a timeout. It may be a spanking. It may be a grounding. As they get older, you may take away privileges such as electronics and telephones and that sort of thing, car keys, things like that. The important part is that you remain consistent in your expectation that they follow the rules that you set. So are you getting encouraged? Are you believing in yourself? I hope so. Are these things giving you any extra ideas? I hope so. Go to as many school events as you possibly can. I know it can be tiring, but it's worth it. Look at what their accomplishments are. Get to know who their friends are. Cheer for them. I think there's something so powerful in cheering for your kids or standing up to applaud. Maybe it's not, maybe they're not involved in sports, but maybe they're involved in fine arts and it wouldn't be appropriate to stand and scream at the top of your lungs. But it would be just to to partake in a standing ovation or something like that. They will look to see if you are there 
and if you are acknowledging their hard work. Acknowledging the work that they do apart from you is absolutely crucial to their sense of worth, of their their sense of being honored. And honoring them means everything. So I want to encourage you to go to as many school events as possible. Get um, get in contact with the teachers if they're in elementary school. See how you might be able to help. Are there any uh, Christmas parties or Valentine parties, anything like that that will be going on that you could help with, that they have a chance to show off and say, this is my mommy or this is my daddy, my grandma. When those opportunities arise, seize them because that is your open door into their world. And the more you go into their world, the more you will know them and the easier it will be to maintain an open sense of communication about what is happening in their life because you're already sharing their world with them. My kids have often said they know when it's me screaming from the stands, well, I can't help it. I get so excited. I think of when Elizabeth would be playing volleyball and I just, every time she dove for a ball, I felt like my knees were hurting. You know, my heart was so with her when she was on that court. And when Lydia is out there cheering, I just, I'm so proud when Stephen was running track and football, all of these things that my kids have done. And they say they, they could always hear me over everyone. I think it's, it is real in that they can identify it. But do you know what makes it more pronounced in their minds is that they are listening for it. Because really, in a crowd, is is my voice going to stick out that much? Not so much. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> you Unless you're so? at a sporting event of your child. <laughs> but, the, but the gym is full of parents clapping and screaming, so on and so forth as much as it is that the child is actually inclining their ear to hear your voice saying way to go or get back up or come on you can do it let's go because as you are cheering them on it builds them up now where I can be heard is in the car so when they (laughs) they get in the car and they tell me that they got a certain award or or um, a particular grade or something has happened I am not saying that you have to do this, but it might give you an idea. I would begin cheering and clapping and and just hooting and hollering over them and because it was a big deal to them. It was important. And it's so funny because when they were younger, when my older three were younger, there was a big age gap between my older three and my youngest one. They would say, oh, no, their mom is going to cheer. Mom, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's so funny how as they got older, they were really looking forward to. They couldn't wait to tell me. They were expecting that hooping and hollering whenever they told me that they something great happened to them. You know, none of us really know how long we're going to live on the earth. And my thoughts are, if I should go tomorrow. Will my kids have that resounding cheerleader in their ears? I hope so. Because there are going to be times in life that I know that they're really, really going to need it. What about you? Do you think about those things? We have to think about our legacy and the things that we're leaving behind. Are you available in the middle of the night for a bad dream? I know it's not convenient and I know it's not fun. But do you know those can be some of the most life-changing hours in a child's life? One time Elizabeth came to my room and she said, she woke me up and she was older. I think she was 17. And she said, Mom, I had a bad dream and I can't sleep. I was so tired, as I know all of you who are single parents can relate. And I said, okay. And so I, I was talking to her and just trying to comfort her. And I said, well, let's not give the enemy any any um any more room to torture you or anything like that I can't remember exactly how I worded it but it was something like that I said let's begin to let's begin to thank God for things let's think about what we can be thankful for and let's take turns and at first you know she was kind of like um like but I'm scared and I said I'm thankful for how pretty your hair smells and that you're snuggled up with me right now And she said, I'm thankful for your comfy blanket and pillows. We went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth 
for quite a long time till we were thankful for the sun. We were thankful for good times, vacations we'd had. All of the, the, the horror from the nightmare that she had had dissipated. And our focus had completely shifted and it was on God and how good he had been. But we were, till we were so tired, we just drifted off to sleep. She said, I can't thank God anymore. I'm so tired. I said, me too. Let's go to sleep. She just stayed there and went to sleep. But do you know that even now she does that and she will thank God and she has learned to shift that perspective when she has a nightmare. Can I foresee her doing that with my grandchildren? Yes. Will I be here to tell her to do it? Maybe, maybe not, but I've given her the example. What about you? What things are you instilling in your children that will outlive you? Let's take a quick break and we'll pick up where we left off. Matters of the Heart radio show is a part of the only Christian radio station in Pakistan. Miss Wendy has the opportunity to share the gospel message there and you have the opportunity to help. For a donation of any amount, you can help her to continue to bring this ministry to the people of Pakistan. For a donation of only $6, they will receive a Bible in their own native language of Urdu. Simply go to mattersoftheheartradio.org and click on the donate button today. That's mattersoftheheartradio.org. You're listening to Matters of the Heart Radio with your host, Miss Wendy. We'd love to hear from you today. You can chat with us by clicking on the chat icon in the player located on mattersoftheheartradio.org, or you can also reach out to us on our Facebook page at Matters of the Heart Radio. Now, here's your host, Miss Wendy. Oh, okay, we're back on the air. <laughs> All right, you're listening to Matters of the Heart Radio show with me, your host, Wendy Torres, and I'm talking about leaving a legacy for your children as single parents, raising them in such a way that your love carries them through. We've talked about the essence, the importance of perspective, not that you have to do it all by yourself, but that you get to do it. You get to relish the love. You get to be there for the special moments. You get to cultivate deep, meaningful relationships with your children. When it comes to time, let's focus on quality rather than quantity and making it valuable time, life lessons time, fun times. You've got to have fun with your children. Wise, wise, wise is the parent who learns to play with their children. Wise, 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 because they begin to lower the gates, the doors, whatever you want to call it, to their heart and let you in. And they trust you. Children learn through so much through playing. They bond through playing. And sometimes they need us as parents not to be so serious and to be goofy, to ride the water slides, to go swimming, to roast the marshmallows of the campfire, to play board games, whatever it may be. Those things really mean a lot. Let's make sure that we're supporting them with their school events and endeavors. And let's make sure that we are taking them uh, to church regularly. I can think of a time when um, life was easier and there were two parents to get everyone ready to go to church. And even then it seemed hard. (laughs) It was much harder doing it on my own, but I want you to know that you can get things ready on Saturday night, get some lunch in the crock pots that when you come home from church on Sunday, the house smells good. Everybody can sit down, relax, and enjoy a good, meaningful lunch and time together. But worship, worship is important, not just at church, but every single day. Discipling your children is key. You can go through the books of the Bible, take it a chapter at a time or a section at a time, but teach your children the word of God. Do not think that it's going to come through osmosis, that just because you're listening to Christian radio and teaching and so forth, that your children are doing the same thing. No, they're in class or they're with friends. You are their source. You are their daily um, provider. You are their instructor in helping them to learn what it is to study the Word of God, to memorize the Word of God, and to fall in love with the Word of God, to lean on, to trust in the Word. How can they if they are not taught? 
So take it seriously. Pray with them. Ask them how you can pray for them. And then pray steadily, faithfully for the things that they entrust you with, especially when you have uh, teens. I think that this is a really great thing to do. I would call my children in. At the, on Sunday night usually and I would ask them how can I pray for you this week and I would jot it in my down on my phone um, so that I wouldn't forget and I would go through that prayer list and I would pray for whatever it is that they asked me to pray for and then I would have a point of reference when I would pick them up from school or having dinner sometime during the week and just ask you know how is it going with so and so or are you getting, are you excited about the test? Are you excited about that field trip? Whatever it is that was going on because they had already shared it with me. And they knew that if I told them that I was going to pray about it, mom was going to pray about it. Let your children know that too, because it helps to open it up and keep the communication open about the things of God. And then you can begin to chronicle the answered prayers so that you can look back at the faithfulness of God over the years. And then when it comes to finances, live by a budget. Try your hardest to the best of your ability to budget your finances. Some of you will say, yes, I know that already. But um, others of you may think that it's not necessary. I want you to know that budgeting is wise. It's good. It's a good example for your children so that they know how to um, how to appropriate their money and tithing your money. I think is one of the most essential things you can do. We never want to rob or steal from God. He says to bring the whole tithe and the offerings into the storehouse. Does he not? He does. Malachi chapter 3. And it's important that we live this way and then we teach our children to live this way. We want God's resources and blessings on our life. And we will never, we will never, ever, ever get it right until we do it God's way. God's way is the best way. And though you may look at your finances and say, I cannot tithe. I don't have enough money left over at the end. I believe you. On paper, you probably don't. But do it at the beginning and watch and see what he does. He says you can test him on this. That does not necessarily mean you're going to have a lot of money for out to eat. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to um, take a $10,000 vacation But what you will find is that there is a greater element of peace. You will find that your things are not easily destroyed. He does rebuke the devourer. Your things will last longer. You will not have as many car repairs. You will not have as many house repairs. That's not a guarantee. And I don't know exactly how God does it for everyone. But in his mighty way, he has a way of taking care of his children. And he always blesses and rewards obedience. So tithe your money. Teach your children to do the same thing. Live by example where dating is concerned. And you know, it's okay to take a break from dating. In my opinion, dating can always exist. You only have your children at home for a certain amount of time, and you want to capitalize on that time because once it's over, it's over. And it's hard to date anyhow when you're raising children. Give that some thought. I know that you may think, well, I want company and I feel lonely, but there are so many other ways to have your needs met besides getting entangled in a relationship that you may not really be ready for. And sometimes you are ready and that is what you want to do. And that's a great as well. Just make sure that you keep your children as your first priority. Remember that they were there first. Um, And you want to be with someone who can honor that. Keep yourself pure sexually. Do not get entangled. Do not live an immoral life because all you're doing is opening the door then for your children to do the same thing because they are going to say, well, you did, and that is not the life. That's not what you want for them. You do. You want to encourage them as much as possible to live righteously, to live purely before the Lord. Watch the friends that you hang out with. If, they're, if you have friends that are coming over and they're a poor influence, well, then how are you teaching your children to choose friends? Everything we do is an example for our children. Everything, everything we do, how we walk, how we talk, how we groom ourselves, everything is an example for our children. And it's important that we set a good example because we will, to a certain degree, reap 
what we sow here. So if you are sleeping with multiple people, if people of the opposite sex are coming and spending the night and you have girlfriends or boyfriends spending the night, then you are opening yourself up for your children wanting to have the same thing happen to them. And we know that we don't want teen uh, parents and we know we don't want to be grandparents before our time. We don't want our teens con- contracting any kind of sexually transmitted diseases either. There's no wisdom in it. So let's make sure we live by example and that life is pleasing to God. Prep your meals in advance. Schedule a menu. Utilize a crock pot. It'll help you to budget your money well. It'll help you to eat healthy. Exercise. Get plenty of rest. Take one day out of a weekend, a month to do nothing but stay in bed for 24 hours, especially if your children visit the other parent. Allow yourself to rest and recharge. Get good books. Tune your ear to the word of God, to his voice. Worship. And you're going to find that the grace that you need is all there. I'm wishing you the best in your journey as a single parent. This is Wendy Torres with Matters of the Heart Radio Show. You've been listening to Matters of the Heart Radio Live. If you enjoyed listening to the show today, we ask that you support it with your gifts. The show could not be made possible without generous contributions from our community of faithful listeners, and in order to make it possible to remain on the air, we need your help. The show is made possible for you and with you, so please consider making a donation today. Please visit the show's website, mattersoftheheartradio.org, and click the donation button at the bottom of the homepage. Learn about partnership opportunities and corporate sponsorship with us to order a signed copy of Ms. Wendy's book, Healing Waters. To schedule a counseling session with Ms. Wendy, go to refreshingtimescounselingcenter.com. Visit us on Facebook, and please don't forget to tune in next week with Ms. Wendy on Matters of the Heart Radio Live.